Over the next couple of videos, we'll discover what all linear properties have in common. And that is, they can all be described with the help of a common template. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. But first, as a reminder, when we're talking about linear properties, we really are talking about linear subspaces. The two notions are complete synonyms. Once again, if we looked at a collection of vectors that satisfy a particular linear property, then those vectors almost by definition form a linear subspace, characterized by that property. Why is that? Well, because both statements have to do with the sum of two vectors, or the product of a vector and a number, either having the same property as the original vectors, if we're talking in terms of linear properties, or belong to the same subspace as the original vectors, if we're talking in terms of linear subspaces. So the two statements are completely equivalent, because they both have to do with closure under addition, and closure under multiplication by numbers. In other words, closure under linear combinations. So the two notions are the same thing. Now, as we're trying to, dis to discover what all linear properties have in common, we'll actually march backwards through our favorite vector spaces. We'll start with Rn, because in Rn, it's particularly easy to see what that common template that I'm talking about is. Then we'll move on to polynomials and functions, and that will be a much richer discussion, but we'll once again be able to identify a common template to go by. And then you would think that the next logical step would be to talk about geometric vectors. But actually, we have already established what all subspaces in the space of geometric vectors look like. They're all either a straight line that passes through the origin, or a plane that passes through the origin, or the whole space, or the zero vector. That's all. There are no other poss possibilities. So we have already characterized all possible subspaces in the space of geometric vectors. So what's left for us is Rn, and then polynomials and functions. So let's talk about Rn. And I brought back the numbers that you saw in the very first example. In that video, where we're talking about impossible decompositions, and we argued that the vector on the left, that's no longer here, the target vector, cannot be decomposed as linear combinations of these triplets of vectors, three different examples, because these vectors share a linear property, that the, but the target vector does not satisfy that property. So it is not in the linear subspace spanned by these vectors, or in short, it is not within the span of these vectors. So that's just a little bit of history. Now we're no longer talking about decompositions. We're now talking about linear subspaces in, the, in their own context. So let's remember what those linear properties were, and let's try to write them down algebraically. So in the first case, the common linear property was that the second entry is zero. How can we write it down algebraically? Well, if we give names to the individual entries, let's just write it here. Let's call them A, B, and C. I don't mean to associate this vector with this space. I, I just wrote it here because it's in the middle. Okay, so if all our entries have names A, B, and C, A, B, and C, then the property that the middle entry equals zero can be written down simply as B equals zero. B equals zero. Okay, so this is the algebraic description of what we previously said in words. The middle entry is zero. Now let's move on to the second one, and then we'll see what all of these expressions have in common. Okay, well in the second one we observed, do you remember, that the second entry is five times the first. So B equals 5A. So let's write it down. B equals 5a. All right, let's move on to the last one. That was the most interesting of the three. And in the last one, we noticed that the middle entry, b, is the average of a and c. b is average of a and c. b 
is average of A and C, which of course can be written like this. B equals A plus C over two. Okay, so what do all of these expressions have in common? Well, here's what it is. It is the fact that all of them can be written as some linear combination of coefficients. Once again, linear combination, the same terms comes back. Linear combination of coefficients equals zero. Here, we're, it's already in this form. It's a very simple linear combination, but that's what it is, b equals zero. This one right here can be rewritten, and I'll go in alphabetical order, as 5a minus b equals zero. And let me underline the ones that I'm that I want you to pay particular attention to. Once again, a linear combination of coefficients equals zero. Can we do the same thing in this last example? Well, of course we can. We can write it as one half a minus b plus one half c equals zero. And let me underline this one. So there you go. That's the common template that we were after. It is the common template that we were after. All linear properties in Rn can be written despite the fact that we used very different words to describe these properties. And words are sometimes more important than algebraic expressions. So all of the words were very different. Middle entry equals zero. Middle entry is five times the first. Middle entry is the average of the other two. So the words are very different. But the algebraic expressions all follow the same template. And that template is linear combinations of coefficients equals zero. A linear combination of coefficients equals zero. A linear combination of coefficients equals zero. So it seems that every property, not just seems that, it's true. Every property, or equivalently, any subspace, can be characterized by just a triplet of coefficients, one half minus one, one half. In this case, five minus one, zero. In this case, zero, one, zero, right? Can be characterized by just a triplet of numbers, such that linear combination of the coefficients involving those numbers equals zero. Now, just to convince you that that's all that's possible for linear properties, Let's think back without writing them on the board, the examples that were false examples, where you see a property, but you cannot, but it is not a linear property. Do you remember what they were? I'll point to these numbers, but you have to think of the old numbers. One of them was that the first entry equals one. How would we write it down? A equals one. Is that a linear combination that equals zero? It's not. It's a linear combination that equals one. So it does not follow this template, so it's not a linear property. So things turn out to be a little simpler than you may have expected previously. In the second example, the property was that the second entry is one greater than the first. B equals A plus one. Does that follow the template linear combination equals zero? It does not. It's either linear combination equals one or minus one. Once again, doesn't follow that pattern, doesn't follow that template, so not a linear property. And in the last example, the property that we noticed was that the entries of these vectors are even numbers. I'm not even sure how to write it down uh, algebraically. There are many ways of doing it. None is particularly helpful, but none of them will look like a linear combination of coefficients equals zero. So there you go. That's what all linear uh, properties have in common. The fact that they can be described algebraically following the pattern that, the linear that a linear combination of coefficients equals zero. Now, I want to modify that statement a little bit. Uh, not negate it, that statement is true, but I just want to show that sometimes it's a couple of these identities. Sometimes you need Two, linear, two different linear combinations of coefficients that equal zero. So here comes that example. I'll just erase these numbers and put in a couple 
new numbers. Actually, I will just erase the last entry. Okay, here you go. I changed the last entry and now you will notice that there are two properties that all of these vectors satisfy. The first one is preserved, that the second entry is zero. Didn't go anywhere. Still a linear property, still a property that characterizes these vectors. But I introduced the second one. And I hope that you can see that what I introduced is that the last entry is three times the first. Last is three times the first. The last entry is three times the first. So there are two simultaneous linear properties that these vectors satisfy. And this one can be written as 3a minus c equals 0. I will underline it because it's in the right form, but I also want to put a curly bracket because it's these two properties simultaneously. So a combination of two linear properties is once again a linear property. As we will discuss in another very short video that corresponds to the fact that an intersection of two subspaces is also a vector subspace. So there you go. We have uh, accomplished our goal of finding a common template that all linear properties satisfy. In the next video, we'll have a much richer discussion because we'll talk about polynomials and functions, a much richer set, especially if you're talking about functions as opposed to polynomials. But we will see that even in that case, at least in the case of polynomials, we'll be able to get a hold of a template similar to this that will involve the coefficients of the polynomials.